Happy Fuck It Friday. Here's to the long weekend. And this is the American wheat beer, Citra. Oh, I have to say, it's a very nice beer now. Um, I'm quite used to the, the clove and the, the almost banana ishness with the Citra. It's mellowed out really nicely. It looks really good. It looks the part now. Uh, it's not holding its head as probably as well as it could. And I struggle to keep my head at times as well. And I also did the uh, with the Sanders American Pale Ale that I'd brewed. As as you can see, balloons off now. This everything's fermented all cleaned and ready. The next brew, this is a pour off of the uh, Sanders APA with Citra, Sabro and Nelson Savan. It was kind of a leftovers brew. Uh, there's a bit of challenger in there too for bittering. Um, this was the first pour, obviously it's not really carbonated, it's off the fermenter. Um, I did it this morning, kegged it this morning. Um, it's not it's, this isn't off the ferment this is off the tap the keg but I only kegged it this morning um, it's now late afternoon it smells nice it smells good mangoey almost for some reason um, dank it's got a touch of dank in there I haven't said that for a long time I would almost think I mean looking at it it's making me think mango and that but You'd almost think mosaic was in there. Taste wise, very, very new, very grassy, a um, bit of bitterness in there. But that is what we'll call, it looks like orange juice, doesn't it? That was malt bill, was um, pale Maris Otter, Simpsons. Pale Maris Otter with 3.24 kilos of that and then a kilo of Vienna and I believe a touch of caramel as well maybe 100 grams 150 grams of caramel it was kind of a using it with a lot of bits kind of thing um, certainly the hops were so Sabro, Nelson, Savan and Citra old Citra it's quite nice I'm sure it'll be good when it's ready. It at least a couple of days minimum in the keg to get up to scratch. Um, long weekend, long weekend, long weekend. What can we do? It's supposed to have sunshine. We haven't. We had a sea threat earlier and clouds have rolled in and it's pretty fucking miserable, hence why I'm wearing the bit of a fleece now because it's a bit fucking cold out there. Um, I've gone short. Shorts are on and I'm considering keeping them on now till winter at least. Been in shorts every day. Interesting. Never I've got to that age you see, you know, like you get to when you're like eight and nine, you're in short pants all the time. Now I'm in my fifties, I think it's time for short pants again. Um Soon be won't be long before I'm probably pissing and shitting myself, so I might as well get used to having the short pants on. <laughs> that is banging. So, what's next? Well, I am going to do uh, another version of um, Czech Pilsner. Now it's the Bible one, but I'm not. I'm going to add some citra to it, just a little, uh, at the hop stand. Now, when I say a little, I mean like maybe five grams. Uh, I just want a touch of lime. There are citrus flavours in it. You know what I mean? You know when you have a Corona and you put the lime in and you drink it and you got the taste of the lime with the lager and it's really nice. I know it's a Czech Pilsner is something separate from a Corona. Pardon me, but it's that idea. And I 
I don't know, probably I think it's got um, probably got rice in like a Corona rather than just pure Pilsner mold. And I haven't got Pilsner mold or Pilsen mold or any of that. I have, um, I'm not sure whose it is actually, it might also be Simpsons, uh, Finest Lager mold, but I'll use that. I'm using that. Um, sue me. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm using the live Novelaggy uh, yeast that I collected from the last brew with the Novelaggies that I did. And I have that in the fridge in a small kilner jar, so I want to put all that in. Um, I know when I said I was doing about the Novelag uh, Czech Pilsner, I wanted to do a Czech Pilsner with uh, water whilst there was heavy rain. And there has been, there had been heavy rain at the time, constant rain. Um, and then I wanted to do a Czech Pilsner sort of during the dry period when there's very little runoff. Um, because I wanted to see, using river water, well I don't actually use the river water, our water is extracted from the River Esk. Uh, I'm in the Esk Valley, well, at the end of the Esk Valley. Um, or one of the Esk Valleys, I believe there's a second one in the Dales. The Yorkshire Dales is another Esk Valley. Um, but yes, the, um, using the river water, I wanted to know, well so obviously you have a high water run off the land, does that increase or decrease minerality and vice versa. Um, so if there's less water in the river, is the minerality more concentrated? Or is it because um, when the water comes off, lots of water comes and you get the runoff of the land, does that increase the minerality? How, where's it lie? That was going to be an experiment and it probably still is, but this isn't going to be part of it. This one is, I want to create a lager and lime kind of thing. A lager and lime, bloody hell. It's like a posh lager and lime. Um, Similar to, yeah, the Corona in lime or old lager and lime, it will be uh, Citra in a Pilsner. That's like I'm going to chip about five, five grams in. Hopefully that's enough. Because obviously with a Pilsner, you're going to get, it's, it's a very, um, you don't want to put too much of anything in because it'll just knock it way out of balance because it is such a light flavoured thing that it just shows obviously uh, any flaws and if you ever do it you will fuck it so five grams I think should be enough so that's the next installment of brewing um, the Hella, Hellas I haven't got a Hellas um, the Kolsch um, Lost Dumble Outs version 2 my Kolsch I did with Sabro ended yesterday it kicked yesterday which is good I was trying to make it kick because I needed to free up space in the keyser because I can only fit three beers in at a time um, at the minute so I had the Bocca Nova in there and that's not a drink I'm going to drink really quickly being a seven percenter the Hellas why I keep saying Hellas why the Colch was four point I think it was a four point Nine, I think it was a four point nine percent beer, so it was a bit easier to drink. Um, the Sanders APA is four point five percent, so that's good. That would be sessionable, a sessionable pale ale. The American wheat itself is five and a half percent, so that's pretty not se it's sessionable-ish, it's reasonable. Um, but yeah, the Bocanova wasn't. So I finished the uh, Kolsch, and then that gave me some space to put the APA in, which needed keg in today. So that's caked and in and ready and starting to um, condition. And this, I have to say that Kolsch, the, the last sort of, um, last quarter of that was absolutely stunning, absolutely brilliant. Uh, the Sabro had kind of melted away, but it helped sort of lift um, the flavours a bit that were left. Uh, made it taste brighter if that makes any sense it tasted brighter um i mean it was because we, we have had sun 
most of this after this week and I um I finished early Wednesday pardon me so I was off yesterday um as well so Wednesday Thursday oh man Wednesday Thursday afternoons I was sitting in the sun enjoying that and thinking this is this is this is the dog's bollocks of a life absolute joy of a beer to drink so that will definitely be getting a brew again and I think I said I was going to alter it slightly um, yes I was going to use actual try and use a water profile for it and that'll get a brew possibly after the Novelaga Czech Pilsner because then I can just drop onto the yeast keg and I'll do that I'm really loving these light beers these days I have to admit I'm really enjoying these light beers saying that this isn't too bad and that Bocca Nova is oh, man I mean I'll Bear with me, I'll pour you a bit, pour you a bit off, I'll pour a bit off so you can see the kind of um, colour of it and I'll use my barrel aged glass just to do so, oh wait there, lines are full of line cleaner at the minute so I won't, I won't do that as well, well as I will, we'll pour that in here, I say line cleaner, it's star Sam, I did do a full line clean today with uh, the purple line cleaner stuff all happily done and dusted and cleaned and then dropped on star so gotta get it ready for this weekend it's a nice one such a lovely weekend right so yes this is the bocca nova now i mean the glass is a bit dirty my apologies um it's not often i use this glass to be fair but look at that this is a beauty it is pretty clear to be honest maybe it doesn't look as good through that but this oh it just smells woody almost as in a smoky wood it's this barrel edge glass i think and the taste Oh, that initial malt hit just like bang smack in your face a little bit of bitterness back end clears clean Oof, yeah there's a good reason that i have I've been very very good with this i have been not <laughs> i could sit here and drink this all night in fact the other night i did have two and the first one i had was just straight the second one I had a touch of um, I had a touch of this oh man that was good a little touch of uh, peatiness to it um, and whiskey oh man it was brilliant it was outstanding um, yeah so that's the Bocanova looking good and the wheat beer is the most sessionable of the beers that I should be drinking this weekend and what to do food wise and obviously it's big weekend so I should get some big food in I haven't I haven't got anything to be honest I did spare ribs last weekend not spare ribs um, rack of ribs last weekend and two racks of ribs uh, halfway through my um, barbecue thermometers went kaput and one of the uh, racks of ribs ended up charcoal and the other was good yeah this set up there the ink bird one yeah it's fucked um, I don't even know why I've left it up there it's just it's knackered it's just dead it doesn't work at all um, so I need I'm in need of a new thermometer barbecue thermometer not really sure ink bird meter problem with the meter is it's so expensive um, Wi-Fi would be good anything Wi-Fi would be good I'd not really sure why but it would I suppose um, I could often leave it do things while things are slow cooking uh, it's mainly to just monitor that uh, that temp on the actually in the barbecue itself on top of the, the racks but yes another expense to add to the list of expenses talking of which uh, Aldi were doing a pizza oven for 99 quid 
gas powered pizza oven. Now I've seen the pictures for it and such. I haven't looked at it and seen it online. Uh, I am tempted because I do really would love a pizza oven. I've been looking at the unis and umming and ahhing over them for a long time now. But two, three hundred quid for a pizza oven that we'll use maybe two, three times a year is a bit much. Doing them on a Camado, yeah, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a faff. Um, I haven't got a proper a proper decent um, plancher or anything to put down for it. Um, so things to look forward to. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble, so we'll leave it there. Um, I hope you have a good weekend. Enjoy your drinks and whatever you do. Take care, and if you got this far, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.